Don't be misled. The Pope is working both sides of the line. He also exchanged letters with Abraham Lincoln. Don't let anybody confuse you. Whether you are a proponent of the North, a defender of the North, whether you're a proponent and defender of the South and their right to secede from the Union, it's the Pope and the Jesuits who fomented that divide-and-conquer strategy so that the Pope could be the gainer in the end. Okay? If you get involved in the, the South was right or the North was right, you've completely eliminated yourself from any ability to know the truth. Okay? Just exactly the same way as if you start... If, if you make all of your consideration in favor of liberalism or the Democratic Party, or likewise, you, you take your, your position in favor of the Republicans, the conservatives, you eliminate yourself from any rightful understanding of what's going on. The papacy controls both sides of every conflict. I tried to explain in, in, in a, a brief explanation of what role the Democratic and the Republican parties serve. Those two parties just serve the dynamic, the energy needed to advance new ideas. And whether they be leftist or, conser or, or liberal or, or democratic ideals or conservative, traditional, republican ideals, they both serve the papacy. It's like I've often described it this way. You have a grandfather clock. Guess who the grandfather represents? Okay? I, I, I just take it from me. It's called a grandfather clock for a reason. Okay? It's got a pendulum. The clock doesn't advance unless the pendulum is swinging, right? It's got to go left. Then it's got to go right. Then left. Then right. And if it doesn't go left, and right, the hand of the clock doesn't move. You see? Progress demands a, a dynamo to move it. So first the government of the United States is Democratic, then it's Republican, then it's Democratic, then it's Republican, and every swing of the pendulum, left or right, guess what? It advances the hands on the clock, grandfather clock the same direction all the time. Now are you beginning to get it? Take your side with the South or take your side with the North and argue and bicker and fight and you will never understand the purpose of the Civil War. The purpose of the Civil War was to energize a dynamic of change. Okay? <clears throat> America still threatened the papacy to become a Protestant nation. It had to be divided, and it had to be conquered. And every swing of the pendulum had to benefit the papacy. And it did. Out of the Civil War came new amendments to the Constitution. We were under the impression, of course, ne they never tell us the real objective of the wars. We were told in the history classes that the objective was to free the slaves. Emancipation Proclamation, remember? But what they got under the guise of liberating the, the slaves, we got amendments to the Constitution that enslaved us all. And what does the papacy say? It is necessary for salvation that every human person be subject to the Roman pontiff, to be a slave to the Roman pontiff. And how are we enslaved to the Roman pontiff? by being enslaved to our government, which is the servant of the, of, of the papacy. 
the woman rides the beast. Remember, the woman represents the Roman Catholic Church. The beasts represent the governments of the world that carry her. She can't go anywhere if it weren't for the beast. She controls the beast. The beast carries her and does her bidding and tramples God's people under its feet. That's the whole history of Roman Catholicism. The old world order and the new world order alike. There's nothing new at all about the new world order. It's simply the reestablishment of the old world order on a global scale. Now that Protestantism has been destroyed, there's no opposition, no protest from Protestants. They think the Pope is a Christian man, and now they're conquering the rest of the world for the Pope. That's why your taxes are so high. It's necessary for salvation that every human person be subject, slaved by the, the Pope, the Vicar of Christ, the Antichrist. Makes perfect sense. And if you're one of those pitiful people who I dearly love, who make a career out of defending both the South or the North, either the South or the North, you've defeated yourself. Just like you defeat yourself if you separate, if you if you support the Democrats, or you support the Republicans, you're just supporting the dynamic that swings back and forth that advances the hands of Father Time, the Father Time in Rome, whose time is about to run out. Now I'm condemned for this this teaching by both the left and the right because they're loyal to the South or they're loyal to the North and the, and the Union, see? Nobody will let go of their prejudices to understand the deep-rooted nucleus of the, of the Revolutionary and the Civil War. It was all designed to help the papacy. The Pope doesn't care if you fight for the North. The, fight, the, the Pope doesn't care if you fight for the South as long as you fight and advance the papal clock. The Pope doesn't care if you vote Democratic. The Pope doesn't care if you vote Republican. He controls both sides of the agenda because they're both his agenda. And when the Democrats win, the Pope wins. When the Republicans win, the Pope wins. So let's stop bickering about Democratic politics and Republican politics and start pointing the finger at Father Time! It's not that difficult to see this. It's not rocket science. We've got to give up our indoctrination. We've been deceived. And doesn't the Bible say he deceives the whole world? Now you know how you've been deceived. You who think you are not deceived. He deceives the whole world. You gotta ask yourself, why aren't these truths told in your public schools? Because they're federally funded. They're federally controlled. The federal government writes the syllabus. Why aren't you taught these things in your churches? Because they're all seminarians. They think they have to have a license to do that which is lawful to preach the gospel. So they go off to a seminary seminary where they're inseminated with a whole bunch of nonsense, and they come back and they leave out the best parts of God's book. And they don't even touch history. Very convenient for the papacy. Very convenient for the man of sin, the son of perdition. Go get you a real pastor. One who knows who the Antichrist is, is not ashamed or afraid to proclaim it and to identify him. If your pastor doesn't know who the Antichrist is, do you realize he's not qualified to be your shepherd? He's not qualified to stand behind that pulpit. He needs to sit in the back. And that's it's up to you to put him there. It's up to you to put him there and to put a man of God behind the pulpit, a Protestant man. 
who will tell you the whole story. The history and the scriptures make perfect sense when you put them together. That's what the Protestants did. They don't do it anymore. They no longer protest. All right. So much for my animated dissertation this morning. I hope I've made sense. You know, if you're offended by me, if you're offended by my manner of speaking, maybe you should go elsewhere. Maybe you should go listen to someone like Joel Osteen. Sugar tongue devil wouldn't tell you the truth if he had a mouth full of it. I'm not milk toast. I'm not a pretty boy. I'm not a papist. The truth, the ugly truth, can't be sugar-coated if you want to get through the hard skins of indoctrinated people. It has to cut through the delirium. It has got to cut through the indoctrination, the mind control, the curse that has been put upon God's people by the most it, the most respected institutions in our country, the government, the schools, and the pulpits of the churches. That's where it comes from. Look, if you're Satan and you want to deceive God's people, you want to control God's people, you want to be like the Most High and cause God's people to do that which God abhors, where would you start? Where would you ultimately like to have the most influence? the government, and the churches. And they're his playground. Why, Tom, you're speaking against God's men, God's servants, God's shepherds, the pastors. <laughs> you see, there's that thick skin again. Well, my pastor loves Jesus. Yeah, so does the Pope. Just ask him. Why aren't they telling you the things that I'm telling you? Chances are, if they ever knew this stuff, they'd find a more romantic or a more palatable or a more sugar-coated way of saying it, but I dare say he wouldn't reach many of you. What, what would it take? Weeping? I've even tried that on Inquisition Update, and I was called a ball baby. Sometimes my heart breaks before the Lord. My Savior and my King! Would to God that more hearts would break before the Lord. Okay. So here we have proof that the Pope wrote a letter to Jefferson Davis. Well, he also wrote a letter to Washington to Abraham Lincoln. They worked both sides of the conflict, true to their Jesuit oath. Remember, Pope Pius IX was Jesuit trained. He was Jesuit controlled. He was paying the price for Pope, Pi Pope Clement XIV's suppression of the Jesuits. The Jesuits were going to control the papacy lock, stock, and barrel, and this Pope did what his Jesuit training instructed him to do to coddle both sides, present yourself as a peacemaker while we Jesuits foment that war. And that's exa exactly what happened. 